Hey guys, Taylor here with facts and tips on firearm safety, plus of course our expert Skip. Hi there. Today we're going to look at traveling with your firearm in your car or on an airline. So, the number one rule is to always consult state laws. You can go online and look up tools such as nra.org forward slash state laws. This can help you determine what type of firearm you can travel with in different states. There are very strict rules on flying with firearms on commercial airlines. The airlines have directions on their websites. Homeland Security sites have the proper guidelines as well. They will tell you about approved carrying cases. You may also want to go to the TSA website for instructions. Remember, you cannot carry the ammunition for your firearm in the same approved carrying case. It must go in a separate approved carrying case. And the amount you may carry, very limited. A good rule of thumb is always buy your ammo once you get to your destination, especially if you're going hunting. Ammunition is heavy and heavy luggage is expensive on airlines. Yeah, pack some gifts for your parents instead and maybe some tasteful sweaters. Fashion advice as well as gun tips, huh? You're welcome. Another key element when checking in at the airport with firearms, be prepared to spend more time than usual. It's a process they take very seriously, so don't miss your flight. Hmm. When transporting firearms in your vehicle, be sure to consult state laws as to the proper storage of firearms and vehicles. Some states have stringent laws. Your lack of knowledge of the law will not keep you out of jail. Plus, they could possibly impound your firearms. Taylor, let's talk about great ways to carry your firearms to and from the range, traveling with them in your vehicle. We're not gonna talk about so much carrying them on commercial airlines. We'll touch on that when we go to the long guns. But just to note, it is a process when you're gonna carry your firearms on a commercial airline. So let's start out with the first one, a range bag. This is a necessity. You got so much stuff now, as you've learned over, over our videos, that you, there's many things that you need to carry. Eye and ear protection, you need a place to carry that. Ammunition, we need a place to carry that. It's a good point, as we talked about malfunctions. Maybe you want to carry some cleaning tools with us, a couple of rags, and you still have room for one, maybe two or three handguns to go along with it. So this makes a great, great conveyance for you when taking your firearms to and from. A second one that we have an example of is an ABS plastic case. A lot of gun manufacturers supply them to you when they sell you a gun. They come in a good case that becomes a good carrying case for your firearm. Now, most of them, you'll see like this one, have the egg crate foam. That's a good protection. It won't scratch your firearm. However, this is only to be used for taking your firearm to and from places. This is not a good remedy for long-term storage. The reason being is that the egg crate foam can retain moisture and that moisture can cause corrosion and corrosion's a no-no around your firearms. And then, last but not least, is a good old-fashioned gun rug, as we like to call it. It's a very hardy material with a zipper, very nice material inside, doesn't cause any scratches, it's not going to retain moisture. You could physically store this as long as it never got wet. You could store for a long period of time uh, your, your firearm in this, but the best places to store for long-term uh, keep of your guns, whether it be long guns or handguns, is a safe. A safe is a must for you, especially if you're going to start collecting guns. You need to keep them secure. And this one works fine. Some of these even have a lock on the zipper. So these are the three basic types of carrying uh, conveyances you have for handguns. So what's the best way to carry if I'm carrying inside my vehicle around town? Okay, so let's break that down into a couple ways. You have a concealed weapons permit for your state that you live in, so the best way to carry that concealed is on you. All right, but let's say you're going to the range. Then the best way is to carry it in one of the type of containers we talked about, 
or lock it into your glove box, preferably in a holster because it gives the firearm some kind of protection. If other people are going to be riding with you for the day, I would say secure that firearm somewhere where they cannot get to it. Yeah, especially if children are involved because you know how inquisitive they are. And quite frankly, I don't want anyone other than myself in control of my firearms. So put it back in the trunk or lock it away in the back of your, of your SUV if that makes the most sense for you. Absolutely. So then what if I want to go visit my cousin across state lines? Aha, great question. So here we go. Let's get on the internet. Let's look up NRA dot org forward slash state laws and let's learn what the laws are of the state that you're going to. Many of the states are reciprocal with other states, means they will accept the concealed carry permit you have and their laws will be the same for you going from state to state. But never assume anything, ignorance of the law won't keep you out of jail and won't keep your weapons from possibly being held. And I guess I should be cautious of that uh, as well with any state lines that I may be crossing even if I'm not stopping. Correct. It doesn't matter if you're stopping or not. As you're in that state and you don't have the proper storage or the proper identification for yourself when it comes to firearms, you can be in for some trouble. Well, that's super helpful information. So let's move on to long guns and traveling with those. Fantastic. So much just like we looked at the different types of conveyances for our firearms with the handguns, it's very similar to the long guns, except when it comes to flying with our guns. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But let's look at this example of a case for your long gun. And keep in mind, especially if you have a long gun that has optics on it, the more that moves around, the more chances you'll have to have to readjust the optics. So you want a case that keeps them secure. Now it can be a plastic, hard plastic case, an ABS plas plastic case, molded plastic for a long gun. It can be as simple as a gun stock. But you can also protect the wood on these guns as well. So if you'll assist me by just unzipping that, and this looks a lot like that gun rug that we had earlier, and it's nice and protective it's got a foam backing in it, so it gives some cushion for the long gun to rest in. It also has some compartments on the outside for storing some accessories, whether it be ammunition. If it was a shotgun, you may want to put some extra choke tubes. Uh, there's, there is room to keep other tools that you may want to carry with it. And that's pretty much the same way we had uh, for the for the different carriers in the long guns. And we're talking again, we're gonna carry this to and from our car, we're gonna travel with it. Now when it comes to flying with your firearms, especially your long guns in this case, which I do quite a bit of in competition, you do need to have it in a very good TSA approved container. And they're big, they're heavy, they're made of metal. Some of them are made of plastic that are approved, but you must make sure that it's in an approved case. You want the best case you can, because remember, when you fly with your firearm, it goes in check baggage. And I know we've all watched them throw that luggage out, and they don't really care if it's your great-great-great-grandfather's heirloom shotgun that you're taking to a family reunion or your competition gun that you've saved a lifetime to be able to buy. They don't care. It's a piece of luggage to them, and they're going to they're gonna chunk it. Now, the process in, in flying with it is you must go to the, to the ticketing agent and it's a three form or three copy form. That form will have the information about you personally. It will have your flight itinerary as well as all the information of the firearm. Once the ticketing agent inspects the form as well as the firearm, your tickets, your itinerary, they will keep one copy to themselves, one copy stays with the firearm, and one copy goes to you. You then close it up and lock it, and you put your locks, not TSA approved locks, 
The TSA approved locks, they can all open, but you can lock it with your key mechanism or your locks and all the responsibility for that gun is now on to you. So I guess you shouldn't uh, be like me and rush to check in for your flight. Do you need to spend a little extra time? Sometimes it's an education process with a ticketing agent. More often than not, you have flown with a firearm more times than they've ever checked one in. So that's a, that's a great point <laughs> to make with it. And also, when you're traveling with your long guns, just as we talked about uh, with the handguns, know what the state laws are. No, the firearm has to be disassembled. This is a great uh, container to keep it in because some of state laws, when you go through their states, require you to have them in lock containers. That's awesome information, Skip, and super helpful when it comes to transporting your firearms safely and by the law. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's been my pleasure. We'll see you guys next time in the next episode.